throughout history, we have been obsessed with death. In particular, the personification of death, giving death an image or form. The philosopher Stephen Cave refers to this as the mortality paradox, in which, on the one hand, we concede to the fact that one day we will all die. Yet, on the other hand, our very state of non-existence is something that we cannot conceive of. Death, therefore, presents itself as something that is both inevitable and impossible. We plant this seed of thought at a very early age. Take, for example, the prayer, Now I lay me down to sleep. There's a line in there that goes as follows, If I should die before I wake. In effect, we are reminding young children of the fact that death is inevitable. And we're also presenting this image of death as something that can come and take you away in the night. This aesthetic representation of death, however, lets us repress our own knowledge of the reality of death, of our mortality, if you will. Because now we can see death in someone else, or we can see death as an image. Within the past year, we don't need to be reminded of death on a large scale with the coronavirus pandemic. Indeed, as we look back on 2020, we see images that remind us of what we have endured. The pandemic itself and the coronavirus. In fact, that image there of the coronavirus that was introduced to us by the CDC in 2020 has become synonymous not only with the coronavirus itself, but with death, the death that followed. Our personification of COVID-19 is nothing new. We have attempted to personify diseases throughout history. In fact, when we introduced the coronavirus in the current pandemic, we provided orientation to it, if you will, in newscast after newscast, where we introduced this image that from that time forward, every night was going to be up there on the screen as we talked about the death toll, the rising death toll. It could have been other images. The NIH and the CDC had a selection of different images that they could have used, but they settled upon this one here, the morphology of the coronavirus itself. And this is the image now that you see night after night. Again, throughout history, we've seen diseases personified as devil-like characters, as the Grim Reaper, monsters emerging from the sea, as specters or ghosts hovering over cities. A century ago, with the influenza epidemic known as the Spanish flu, we see it as this menacing character inflicting pain and destruction. Thomas Mann reminds us that all interest in disease and death is merely an expression of an interest in life itself. It's just now that we're in the 21st century, we see it take different forms. It comes in the form of the World Health Organization dashboard, or the CDC dashboard, where at a moment's notice we can go in and get real-time data on the death toll itself. But the image du jour for the current pandemic of death is, in fact, the CDC coronavirus. We see it every night. In fact, we've given it a moniker. The spiky blob was a name the New York Times gave to it last year, and it seems to have stuck. And it re is reminiscent of a 20th century sci-fi film, The Blob, again, about another menace that was here to destroy the world. There really is a nexus or a crossroads between the personification of the COVID coronavirus and of the personification of death itself. In fact, if you go back and look at the history of the personification of death, it really is born out of the idea that death itself is an idea with, without any content. It's unthinkable. It's inexplicable. It's a conceptual je ne sais quoi, something that we cannot fathom. And yet we engage our imagination to imagine the unimaginable, death itself, and thereby giving it form. Whether it's a century ago in depicting the cholera epidemic in Europe or the current COVID-19 pandemic, throughout history, we've tried to create this bond between both history and biology by depicting death, giving it form. Probably one of the best illustrations throughout history has been that uh, of the 
would-be victim of death, challenging death, to one last game, one last chance to live another day. It goes all the way back to 1200 B.C. with the illustration in the tomb of Queen Nefertari, where uh, the queen is playing the game of Senate against an invisible character thought to be death. And we've seen it more popularly throughout history as that person challenging death to a game of chess in artwork, in film, animated series, and most recently as a healthcare worker challenging death to a game of coronavirus chess. A lot of these depictions of death can trace their genesis back to the Black Plague of the 14th century, also known as the Black Death. This is where we start to see an attempt to try to domesticate the death on a large scale, try to make sense of it by giving it form. The most popular form was the skeletal character wielding a scythe, which eventually would be known as the Grim Reaper. Again, trying to domesticate that which we knew that we could not control. This painting, famous painting of the Black Death, the Triumph of Death, actually comes from a 2020 online article talking about the popularity of a Netflix series on the Black Death uh, that was trending because of the current pandemic. In fact, this is what we see uh, time and time again within the current pandemic, going back to the Black Death and trying to look at the current coronavirus pandemic through the lens of that time period here. Sam Knight in this article in The New Yorker talks about reading about the Black Death with his daughter during the coronavirus outbreak. Rather macabre series of bedtime stories, I'm sure. Uh, the New Statesman article here reminds us that the Black Death is still haunting us and it's still part of our collective memory. And that's why we go back and we retrieve that. In fact, the two most popular depictions of death itself that we see resurrected during the current pandemic are the Grim Reaper and the Plague Doctor. Whether it's this 19th century painting or this 2020 political cartoon of the Grim Reaper on horseback, again, our attempt is try to take that which was threatening to us, that was rather shapeless in form, and give it form, make it visible once again so we can control death, or so we think. The same thing is the case with the Plague Doctor, sometimes referred to as Dr. Beak or Dr. Beaky. Centuries-old painting of it in a 2020 political cartoon, reminding us that our attempt to try to personify death is something that cuts across all cultures at all times. Indeed, as the Washington Post points out here, the image du jour for the current pandemic of death is the Grim Reaper. We see it in online publications talking about and equating COVID-19 to the Grim Reaper. We've seen it in satirical works, such as a lawyer who was protesting the opening of Florida beaches this past year, dressed up as the Grim Reaper, or in a Texas A&M onion-like publication talking about the Grim Reaper accepting a fraternity bid last fall when they opened up campus again. Looking at the Black Death through that prison, trying to make sense of COVID-19. And that's what this is about. It's a search for meaning. A search for meaning amidst something that seems inexplicable, something with no meaning whatsoever. And it's our attempt to try to imagine death is something that is the radical opposite of our own being. And the goal there is to provide us with a focal point for our search for ourselves. Again, the dance macabre is invoked here as part of our lens through which we can view the Black Death. The last image of the Black Death, or of the angel of death, is one that we see invoked again in the current pandemic. The angel of death who comes to take us away in our hour of need, who comes to comfort us. It's something that we've seen time and time again throughout history, and it's also something that we've invoked in the current coronavirus. So as we look back on the unfathomable toll that the coronavirus has taken over the course of the last year, and as we find ourselves having completed four seasons of the pandemic and entering into yet another cycle of the seasons, we find ourselves doing something that we've done throughout history, and that is trying to give form to death so that we can give death meaning, but also, along the way, give meaning to life. For in the end, our understanding of death is a prerequisite for our understanding of life. Thank you.